Hello, my darlings. This is one of the five stories I teased on my community tab. And people were really, really wanting this one to be written first. Well, here it is, my lovely little darlings. But before we dive right into it, I would like to tell you that I have both a Patreon and a merch store. I would greatly appreciate your support. If you support me on Patreon, you can read my stories right before I upload them. So technically you can read them. In other words, if you want to read my stories, you need to donate to my Patreon. One dollar is already enough to grant you unlimited access. Oh, and um, should you not have the monetary availability to support me with, uh, you know, sweet, sweet money, you can help me by simply watching the video until the end, liking or disliking, and commenting anything down below in the comments. This way, you can make YouTube do its freaking job. Anyways, anyways, if you're new here, I would greatly appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button to join my beautiful darling doll army. Now please, enjoy the show. What a lovely evening, you thought. Your boyfriend, the pro hero, Ground Zero as you were lovingly allowed to call him Kak-chan, had picked you up at five, and you two went on your merry way. First, you watched the most cheesy romantic comedy you had ever seen. In fact, it was so cheesy, yet the weird feeling some younger viewers of this movie might get some wrong ideas about the ideal guy or girl. And then you two went to the most lavish-looking five-star restaurant you'd ever seen. And then again, it was run by your old high school chef cook Lunch Rush, the fast food hero. Katsuki ordered the steak, while you ordered the most mouth-watering lamb chops you ever read the description of. And it tasted just as good. So, how's life treating you? He asked with a confident smile. I know I'm not home very often. Work. <laughs> Sorry about that. You shook your head. Oh no, it's, it's been a joy. Really, just... You paused. I feel like such a gold digger. He gave you a hearty laugh. Three weeks ago, he had convinced you to live in his huge apartment in the middle of the city. After all, he was rich. It's fine. I know you aren't. For a moment his smile faltered. I know my fair share of gold diggers, sweetheart. You're definitely not one of them. Then his smile returned. It's fine, just don't overdo it. Mi casa suit casa. You chuckled. What? It's mi casa e su casa. He blushed, making you chuckle once more. I love you, you said with a soft smile, which forced his blush to deepen. I love you too, sweetheart. Eventually, however, you two finished your meal, paid, and left. What a wonderful evening, Kachan! You exclaimed as the two of you reached the door of the skyscraper's giant apartment was in. And it isn't over yet. He purred. You giggled. Oh, what does that mean? He wrapped his arms around you. Yes. Slowly his hands moved down to your butt. Hmm, let me think. You will make it hard for me to sit tomorrow. Your seductive tone made him groan. However, before he could reply, his phone rang. Uh, hold on. You shrugged with slight annoyance. They are what? 
he shouted suddenly. Oh, sorry, babe, I gotta run to the office. Uh, something about the leak. He barked at you after hanging up. Your heart sank as disappointment spread throughout your body. Well, guess tonight was too good after all. But he was already back in his car. Apparently he didn't even have time to say goodbye. You entered the dark apartment without him. Its silence was almost deafening. With a sigh, you walked past the beautiful black and orange decor to his gold-plated bathroom. Probably the most expensive thing in this entire building. He spent a small fortune on that luxury bathtub. You kicked off your shoes and were about to take off your dress when suddenly something heavy hit you on the back of your head. An explosion of pain followed as you fell onto the ground, hard. Before your vision blurred, you heard a noise. It sounded like the singing of a girl. I'm on the moon. It's made of cheese. A splash of ice-cold water ripped you out of the sanguine blackness. Fear was the first thing you felt. Then you saw the ropes that tied you to an uncomfortable chair. And the fear was replaced by absolute horror. In front of you, under the harsh light of a singular lamp, stood a girl. She was wearing a white high school uniform. On top of that, a brown jacket. Yellow eyes were seemingly staring right into your very core. In her hands was a dripping bucket. Oh, nice! You're awake! Her tone was sweet, but her eyes were filled with fire. Who are you? You croaked. And she smiled. Oh, did Baku Baby not tell you? <laughs> she giggled. My name is Hime Kotoga. Nice to meet you. She took two steps to your left towards a clean metal table. On it were things whose use you definitely didn't want to feel or know. You know, it's a shame that Bakuho likes his job more than you. She picked up a scalpel off the, from the table. That way you would probably have a much better evening tonight. She walked over behind you. Now tell me, little angel, she whispered into your ear, how big is he down there? You blushed and looked into the opposite direction of her. Toga chuckled. <laughs> that means either he's really big or terribly, terribly disappointing. She walked back in front of you before she slowly traced the scalpel along your skin. It produced a gross scratching noise inside your head and small stings of pain whenever the sharp blade penetrated the skin just a bit. Once she reached the back of your hand, her body stopped moving entirely. Your breath hitched. And then she slammed the tool into your hand, nailing it to the chair. The pain ripped through your body like a flash. And you screamed, your eyes filled with tears. With bloodied hands, Toga grabbed you by the chin, forcing you to look at it. Blood was slowly oozing out of the wound, while your hand trembled ever so slightly from the pain. This is actually my favorite part. The moment when they understand that they're not getting out of your life. She gloated. He will find me soon enough. You coughed. Without saying another word, Toga grabbed her scalpel and yanked it out, eliciting another scream from you. The blood now leaving your body faster. T -t -t -t. Such hope, such anger, 
You hate me, do you? Asked the monster in front of you. Why are you doing this? You cried. Love? Nah, uh, that's uh, what usually is the reason for me. She moaned. No, I just really, really hate Bakugo. The pain in your hand slowly turned into a numb pounding, giving you just enough strength to collect your thoughts. What do you want? Information? The girl giggled with glee. <laughs> no! I learned from experience that torture doesn't give you the information you want. No, 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 no. I just want... She put her thumb under her chin and thought. I just want... Him to suffer. She walked back to her metal table. Hmm. Ah, I'm feeling this tonight. You heard a loud clong behind you. Oopsie, a bit on the heavy side. Ah, I like that. Your body began to rush with adrenaline when she came back into view, a two by four in her tiny hands. Without as much making a single sound, she swung it straight into your chins. A disgusting crack filled the room, before your whole body convulsed with agony. Sorry, I really didn't like the look of your legs. They were too... What's the word? Perfect. You couldn't bear to look at them. But she forced you to by grabbing the back of your head. Seeing the broken mess that was your legs, you could no longer hold it in. Hot liquid shot up your throat, and with a grotesque gurgling sound you vomited all over yourself. Tears now streaming out of your eyes like a waterfall, while snot hang from your nose. Ugh. I always get so ugly at this stage, she muttered. Her next swing hit your head. Not hard enough to knock you out, sadly. But still, a powerful enough blow that made you see spots of a muddy purple and a dark brown. Now blood mixed with your tears as you quietly wept, while your head hung slump off your shoulders. Uh, I can't decide, she shouted behind you. With a cartoonishly evil grin, she pulled the table up next to you. On it were various blades, needles, and other things. Some were looking rusty, some covered with dried blood, some clean. Your eyes widened in horror while you stared at a serrated blade about the length of your foot. I feel as if showing these to people is always more enjoyable than only showing you one at a time. Her hand floated dangerously close to the serrated knife. With panic, you moved your head to the opposite side of it. That one! You spouted out quickly. Toga raised an eyebrow and grabbed something on the left. This one? Isn't it a little boring? It was a pair of tweezers. Ugh, I watched too many shows where they use these, but uh, fine. She kicked the table away and aggressively shoved them under a nail of your unharmed hand, sending a stinging pain down into your gut. This will hurt, she paused. More than you think it will hurt. Like, no joke, she giggled. <laughs> Happened to me once. Oh boy, this really wasn't a fun experience. If it wasn't so cliche, I would actually admire your choice. I would have just picked the big saw blade and stabbed you to death. I think I now understand why he loves you so much. A searing pain hit you, like a ton of bricks, as she ripped it off. It hurt so much, you thought you'd pass out again, right then and there. 
You looked up at her, trying to get your bearing. Her words sounded muffled. She kept going. Crack! It was unbearable. Crack! She violently grabbed you by the hair, forcing you to look as she mutilated your fingers. A nub of flesh hung from the side, barely attached. It didn't even look like a fingertip anymore. You barely even registered the blood spewing out. You felt faint. Make it stop. You begged. Your boy's barely there. Please, make it stop. She didn't say anything. Crack. A cheerful tune interrupted Toga's work. The hell? She asked and looked around. You tried to collect yourself. That was your ringtone. Was Kakchan calling you? Hello? She said in your voice. How did she do that? But your body was too weak to say anything. Hey, uh, where are you? He asked. Oh yeah, Baku baby. I was gonna tell you that I'm with Deku and... Uh, basically, I'm breaking up with you. His dick is just... Oh! Quiet filled the room. Hey, Kakchan, She said with Deku's voice. You met the number 3 Pro a few times. Thanks to Bakugo. How was she doing that? Was this her quirk? You're not her. In fact, you're neither of them. Toga blinked. What? She would never break up with me over the phone. She's too nice for that. What did you do to her, Toga? The anger. You could feel it. But you didn't feel hope when Toga gave you a look. A look of pure bliss. Oh, please. You know what I'm going to do to her. This is revenge for not joining us. That was years ago, Toga. Toga, I swear, I will find you. I can trace this call. She shrugged and simply hung up the phone before harshly throwing it against the wall opposite to yours, shattering it into pieces. <sighs> dumb, dumb little boy. Toga now picked up the serrated blade from the table and walked behind you. She snaked her arms around your shoulders, the blade touching your chest. With her face buried into your neck, she spoke. You know what's the funny part about all this? You answered with a whimper. Your boyfriend just got you killed. She propped up the knife against your chest, its tip burrowing barely into your flesh. No, please don't! You, you don't have to do this, I beg you! The knife went deeper. Stop! Please! The sound of tearing flesh was the only thing you could hear. Blood began to crawl up your throat. You gurgled. Your body twitching with pain as it cut through your artery. You lost the will to fight. Your eyes clouded. And your body went numb. And then your whole world went dark. Bakugo rushed into the building, some warehouse near the dogs, ignoring the commands of the police officers, Deku and Red Riot. He blew open doors and holes into walls, a mad rampage to find you, hopefully still alive, until he reached a heavy iron door inside the cellar of the building. After a quick explosion, he entered his worst nightmare. His eyes widened in shock. 
he ran up to your bloodied corpse. Hands outstretched in sheer desperation. His arms wrapped around your cold body. Oh, was the only thing that he could muster up to say. He had been too late. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Something had broken inside of him. The world around him froze. As the will to live left his body. He desperately held you close, hoping you'd make a sound. Somewhere behind him, numb footsteps came closer. Oh no, Kachan! shouted Deku as he marched over to him. Leave me alone! He cried as the hands of Deku and Red Riot were trying to pry him off of you. Stop it! You're hurting her! She's dead, muttered Kirishima with a pain-filled voice. Oh, stop saying that! She will wake up! Any minute! But... Kacha... Kadadeko... Barked the redhead. Let him mourn. Bakugo buried his face into your chest as his hot tears ran down his cheeks. I'm sorry. He weeped. I'm so sorry. Deku and Riot took a respectful step backward. Eventually, Bakugo took a deep breath and gently laid your corpse onto the ground, two fingers moving up to her eyes, closing them shut. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>